Preacher Episode 5, South Will Rise Again. Now, just to start with the actual start of this episode, we get our, like, mystery cowboy dude in this episode again, and we get to see a lot more of him in this one. You know, we had... I think he only said one line in the, that first episode where it was like, or a couple, he said like three words within that one line. It's like, no, it's actually a crappy place or something. And this we get the rest of his trip. He goes into town. We actually see him in old school 1800s rat water. And he goes to the saloon. You know, first he goes to the guy. We get to see this man, his wife, and his son. And so he goes to, I guess, the chemist or, you know, the pharmacy guy, the apothecary, if you will. Although I don't think they use that in the Western. Um, but, he, you know, he goes to the guy, then he goes to the saloon, sees some random people, he gets a drink, he has to basically pay for a chair, which I thought was really funny. He's like, oh, you know, I got a free chair, because there are no sleeping rooms, only horror rooms. So, he got himself a chair, they have this old preacher, and I thought what they were going to do with that is show, like, oh, preachers in the past and stuff like that, which they kind of did, because that guy was an actual preacher. But he made a funny joke, and... The dude saw the family that he had run into, and they killed the father, and they were raping the mother, and they were forcing the boy to watch, which is a crazy scene, and I, I thought he'd do something, and unfortunately he waited until the end, so I'm assuming he'll still get revenge, but I don't know, because those people could easily be gone by the next day, so it just kind of makes me wonder, like, I don't know if he'll get the revenge that I'm hoping he gets, um, for me personally, but I like what we got from his character. It was like, alright, so we know that he was in war. He is, at least at this point, a normal person, because they're showing him, so either he ends up supernatural, or maybe something he did is, like, in the history of the city. I didn't even think of that until just now, but maybe there's something he does, which may be the great rampage of Ratwater, because he grabbed a gun and I could not figure out what that second thing was. It looked like he may have grabbed a sword, but it looked too skinny to be a sword. But it could be, since he was, you know, considering that old style of war, he could actually have a sword. And I don't know. I'm just really curious. That's why I'm hoping we get to see him in the next episode and they don't do another couple of episodes in between uh, his portion. Because that would kind of suck because I'm, I'm kind of excited now to see what they do with him because we've gotten our second glance at him. It was much bigger, like, he had the whole opening scene was for him. And still super, um, super, super vague and mysterious and just, who is this dude? We, he fought in war, and that's it. He fought, um, I believe the guy said Virginia, so I guess technically that counts for the North. I, I'm not, well, he said Gettysburg, but, you know, how all, all everything played out. Um, so, I don't know. I also don't know my times for wars, to be totally honest with you. But, he, you know, he was going against the guy, and the guy's like, oh, we lost a lot of people that day, and lost a lot of horses, and I've never seen someone so excited, you know, with killing. So, I don't know if that's just like, oh, he was just like a great soldier, and he just like destroyed people because he was super good at it, and obviously that made the guy mad, but it's really clear he's left that behind, like a lot, a lot behind, because... All he did, like, he struck the one guy who got in his face because he was trying to, because he went past the family that he was talking to during the camping trip, who turned out to be complete a-holes. I don't like them anymore because they had a bunch of scalps, which, that was crazy as well. It's like, oh, um, of course, well, they, of course, they said, like, Indian. They didn't even say Indian, which is still wrong. But, you know, Native American scalps and Mexican people's scalps are half price, and just, it was just crazy when I saw this. I was like, I'd never heard of that before in my life where that's, like a form of currency or anything i'd never heard that before so seeing that was just insane for me and then we see this family and it's like oh that's what they're doing so they're totally fine because they're like business people i i guess i don't know so i'm not sure how everything's gonna play out of course he he saves the serum he goes back he has to walk back because the guy comes out with by the way i noticed like three really random things there are like some serious moments that kept happening and i kept noticing like the most random stuff but when the guy comes out and it's like you know he's talking about how he knew him from the war and how they're on opposite sides and i know he's about to shoot the guy's horse all i could tell all i could think of was like man the gun that guy had looked super freaking cool to me i was like that is a sweet freaking rifle it looked just something about it, it was like super it was like a black glossy sort of thing and the hammer looked weird too because it looked like it was like an extended curve 
sort of handle or something. So I noticed that. Like I, I don't know why. I, it just looked really cool. I was like, holy crap, that gun looks really interesting. It was like super shiny, which you don't see in a lot of westerns. They normally, unless it's silver. I've never seen like a black shiny gun. It's either silver or everyone just has the normal like typical six shooters, which I guess are kind of shiny, but they're all silver. So. That was something super random I noticed, but it looked really cool. I was like, I'd love a replica of that guy's revolver. But that looked really cool to me. And, of course, the guy shoots his horse. And he could have done something. Like, I feel like he's, you know, still good enough, you know, to have taken that guy down. And he probably knew what he was going to do. Because I'm like, as soon as he walked out and they show him with his, um, his jacket open, I was like, that doesn't look like it's going to be a Bible he's pulling out. It's either going to be a knife or a gun. And I couldn't tell because of the way it was positioned. I was like, it kind of looks like a combat knife a little bit. But it, of course, ends up being the revolver. And he could have stopped him. And all he says is don't. Like, super calmly, like, don't. And then he shoots it and he falls. And then it's like, well, I got to get up. And so he just, he walks. And, of course, he's, you know, too late. And not only does the child die, but the mother gets sick from the child. I'm assuming that's why she was dead. And she dies, too. And they're just birds picking up both of their dead bodies and picking up the little um the puppet and it's like peeling the eye out and stuff very obviously symbolic stuff and so he snaps and it it also made me wonder because when he opened up that drawer and he knew that those guns were there it makes me wonder if that was his family because it certainly didn't seem that way it seemed like those may have just been people he knew but it was the same house because when he does that and he opens up the drawer they show um they show the house from the outside and all these crows like fly out. So it was the same house. He didn't, he wasn't in another house. So it's still a bit of a mystery. Like how did he know them when it seemed like he was just like a messenger almost the first time we saw him. It was kind of like clearly he knows these people because the woman asked him for help. But they didn't seem like family. I certainly didn't think he was living with them, but he knew where the weapons were. So he, there was something going on there. That wasn't his daughter because she would have said, dad, like help me or whatever so there's some still a little question to that we may not even get an answer it may have just been people he knew that he was staying with who knows but the way it ends i really loved it. i was like okay so he's getting the guns i was a little upset because i was like oh it's about to get really crazy and then the thing came and i was like crap i know it's not gonna go back to him it's gonna go into the present which of course it does but i'm really excited to see where they go with that because it was just really crazy like i don't know what they're gonna do with that and it should be interesting. I don't know if it's going to be something where it's like, oh, we see like this crazy massacre that happened in the town. He's at least going to try to kill those people um, that raped the, the mother and forced the son to watch. So he's at least going to kill them. At least. And I would assume the preacher and maybe the people that were with him, because of course those other people that were with the preacher, they like came in and were just stomping on the guy. So probably kill those guys too. Don't think that they didn't look like the same people. So that's a good you know, seven or eight people to take out, and once you run into a town shooting it up, probably going to bring other people to try to shoot you up, and then you got to shoot more people, so probably going to be pretty chaotic next time we get a, you know, get a look at him, but I'm excited for what they're going to do with him, we still don't know anything about him outside of the war stuff, and it's going to be crazy the next time we see him, so I am looking forward to that, and I'm curious if it'll take place during the day or not, because the only scene we had at night was during the last one, uh, when he was at the campfire, this whole thing was during the day, like, the whole scene of him walking, they only showed the day part, so, that I thought was pretty interesting, they stuck to, like, the sunset and everything like that, it was all daylight, um, him being on the horse, him turning around, him having to walk, they skipped the whole night process, we don't actually see the night, uh, when he's staying at the bar, like, he's basically, you know, we see him go to the town, he sits down, he hears the joke, he sees the woman, and I believe it was the next day, um, after that scene, it, it skips to the next day. So, I don't know if that was meant to be something or, you know, what the deal was, but... I don't know, it was just a crazy opening scene. And then we get to the rest of this episode, which was also really crazy. It was very different than what I was expecting. Preacher himself, um, Jesse's using his powers like crazy. And I knew it was gonna happen. I didn't think it would be this soon, but I was like... Maybe it'll go crazy in this episode. Maybe everything will just happen in the next couple episodes. But we have it, and I'm assuming it will, because he was using his powers like crazy in this one. And I'm like, he, first off, the stuff he says, different people, different ideas. Th that was exactly what I said. Once we got to the end of the episode, I was like, how did King Cannon get 
I need to kill these people because he says the line like we either grow up or we die or something crazy like that and I was like how did he get let me use this sh also another crazy thing that shotgun looked cool um how do I how does he get from serve God to just blow these people away so it's like you say one thing and I don't know different people think different stuff about the same sentence so somehow he was super nice going all the way through and then he just killed those people off. I just don't understand. Maybe his reasoning is going to be they were trying to take over and they were too persistent or something crazy and pushy and that's not God's way. Something crazy. I don't know. But that really shocked me. At the, I will, it shocked me just because of how soon it was. Because when he's talking to the people, I was like, oh, he's it's going to happen like in a later episode. And he's still super nice and everything. It's like, oh, you know, should we wait and stuff? It's like, oh, well, I guess not. And then he just picks up that shotgun and just blows them all away so that was a crazy moment by the end and obviously that's going to come up in the next episode we of course have um jesse in this episode at least by the end he does get confronted by the clones so he thought you know like oh it's god's power and they're like oh ooh, we gotta explain what's going on to you and clearly you don't know anything because you know uh cassidy didn't really tell you anything so they realized that as soon as they sat down like oh we got played like this that's bad. So, that's that should be fun in the next episode. Uh, we got the scene from the trailer that I really loved with the clones in the bathroom and the guys in the tub and he's trying to help the other guys. Like, you know, we have a, a slight massive security breach and I, I love that line, so that was funny. Go through the whole episode prepping and it's like, alright, let's do this. And then the phone cuts off and I was like, that can't be good news for them, which means if they finally stop calling after an entire day, I have to assume that means they're going to be sending somebody else. And they're already freaked out because they've screwed up that they'll be basically erased. Like, no more clones, nothing, they're done. So, it might not be in the next episode, but we'll, I'm assuming we'll get some new character um, in the next couple of episodes to come after them and actually uh, get things done with Jesse. So, I'm excited for that. We, of course, have um, Cassidy and Tulip in this episode, which had a very different ending uh, than I was expecting. So we have Tulip asking the questions, which I thought was actually a great scene. It's like, okay, so we get all these answers. Um, no fangs, sunlight hurts, no cross. We saw the holy water thing when he had the fight uh, before. And he doesn't, well, he makes a joke about it, but he doesn't really, like, go nuts for human blood. So I thought that was interesting. Obviously, the silver bullet thing was for werewolves, too. So I thought that was pretty cool. I like the way that they did that. They kind of give the full explanation Basically, sunlight, I would assume if he got his head chopped off, he'd be done for. Um, and that's probably about it. Who knows? They might have the heart thing as well, but I don't really know. Um, but that was pretty interesting. I was glad that we got kind of a definitive on that, you know, the fang stuff and everything. So they have that, and then he finds out that Tulip is trying to get with her boyfriend, as she puts it, which I thought was interesting. And he doesn't realize that she's talking about Jesse. And I think I mentioned that last time. Like, I I was wondering, like, I don't believe they ever had a scene together. So, the, you know, it turns out they hadn't. So when she's talking about, like, oh, I'm going to, you know, once my boyfriend leaves this stupid job, we're going to go find this guy, Carlos, who wronged us and will get revenge. And, you know, she spells it out for him. And they just end up doing it by the end of, towards the end of this episode, which really surprised me. And... I just don't understand why. Because it was clear she didn't really want to. Like, her face was just, like, completely dull. So I was like, I don't understand what's going on. Like, it just it just really confused me. I didn't understand what was happening whatsoever. So I'm guessing this isn't the case, but they might do something kind of crazy where maybe somehow Jesse unintentionally used his powers on her because he was saying the stuff about you know we can be good and things like that but it didn't seem like she changed and of course they didn't do the whole voice thing but it didn't seem like she changed to me personally but different people have different ideas so her being good I don't, I don't see how that would in any way shape or form translate to her you know doing Cassidy so I don't really know but I don't think that's the case. I think at this point she's probably just using Cassidy and it's like, oh, have them sleep with me. That'll probably help me, you know, if I can't, you know, convince Jesse. 
I will at least have someone that can guaranteed take down Carlos for me. Or at least help me, you know, take them down. So I'm assuming that's what she's doing right now. Still sucks to see that. But I was like, I, I guess that's just her plan at this point. So we'll see how that plays out. And uh, like I said, Jesse going around using his powers a lot. We got to see a lot of um, the boy that tried to kill himself. I Honestly, I can't think of his name just yet. But he actually had a big focus in this. And I actually enjoyed that. I thought that was actually uh, pretty good. We got to see a lot of his character. And it kind of starts off with him and his dad. And he's like, you know, I heard someone. I was pretty sure I heard someone in the barn or whatever. And then when they get up to his room, he sees all the spray paint. It's like, you know, finish the job. And it, you know, it sprays down to a shotgun. And it starts to freak his dad out. And it was really messed up when he cooks him, you know, the omelet. And he flips out, you know, slams the omelet and, you know, the Play-Doh get up against the wall. And it's like, maybe if you really want to help, maybe you should just finish the job, like they said, which was insane. And this is another scene. The remote they had was for DirecTV. I really don't know why I picked up on that. I think it's because they don't even use those remotes anymore. That's how. That's why I picked up on that. I was like, that's old DirecTV. But random thing, number three. Um, but that scene was just really crazy that he said that. And he didn't seem to snap out of it either. It wasn't one of those moments where it's like, oh, they say something really bad. And then it's like, I can't believe I just said that. He kind of just was like, I said it. I'm still pissed, and that was it, that was kind of it, and he, you know, his son got up, and he's cleaning, you know, picking up the pieces, and, you know, Jesse is going through, and he's helping people, and he's helping people, and he has that moment, um, with Tulip, which I thought was a pretty cool moment, when she kind of outs him in front of everybody, and he's like, you know, it's fine, and he just kind of lets it go, it's like, you know, I've done worse, and I thought that was interesting, I was like, that's a pretty cool moment, because, Obviously, nobody knew about that stuff, but she's like, you know, the Komodo dragon thing. And he goes out to help the guy. Um, I instantly hated that one woman who was like, she kept calling him it, so hated her. And so he goes out, he's like, you know what, we're going to figure this out. He takes him to the girl's house. And unless I'm super, super wrong, this is the girl who has a part of her brain missing. And... It dawned on me that maybe, considering he didn't kill himself, maybe when he was doing that, I don't know if it was a suicide pact or if she just happened to be in the room, but I feel like that's what it may have been, is that he tried to kill himself and she just happened to like walk in or something. And it would kind of explain it because I was so confused. I was like, it doesn't make sense how he could do that. And, you know, it only destroys like the front of his face. That always confused me. So maybe he got distracted, and, you know, with it being buckshot, if she, especially if she was close enough, it would take off a, you know, a big chunk of her brain, and I feel like that may have been what happened, that's why her mother was so angry, and was like, you know, that's why she called him a murderer, because he tried to kill himself, and if he was distracted or something, and he turned, and it went off as he was turning, it would, like, you know, blow his face off, but it would still hit her, and hit her in the head, and, you know, took her out, so... I thought, that, I thought that was very interesting. I was like, I was just surprised. Like, I was like, oh, I didn't know that there was any sort of connection. Because they didn't make a connection. Um, they may have, unless I totally missed it before. But they actually say, like, Tracy's name, which, it's a shame. But they said her name twice, and I remembered it. And I know Jesse said the guy's name. And it's like a simple name. It's almost like Edward, but I don't think it's Edward. But for some reason, I remember, I read it too. Especially if I read something, I'll remember it. So, like, Tracy... Um, but I thought that was a crazy scene. I was like, oh, that's a connection that I just never put together because I don't believe they've mentioned it or I completely missed it if they had before. But I thought that was interesting. And then, of course, we have the scene where her mother's, like, freaking out, destroying the car. And that's when I was thinking, he needs to be really careful. Because when he was doing that stuff in front of everybody, it's like, you know, he's like, put the bat down. And he's like, he just leans over and is like, forgive him. I was like, he needs to be careful where he does that and who he does it in front of because things will get really suspicious and people will start to understand stuff which we have in this episode where once again i don't remember the guy's name but the guy who works for king cannon he finally comes back and he he actually does go to work and he realizes that the preacher told him to serve god and he understands now that he truly has this power and he tells his wife and everything so 
I'm not 100% sure what to expect from that, but I can't wait to see how he reacts in this next episode because he's going to know this wouldn't have happened. Like, he never would have even remotely met with these people if it was just him. So it has to be, you know, Jesse telling him to serve God, which, once again, different people think different things, I guess, because that's still just crazy to me. But I'm looking forward to his reaction in this next episode and what he really thinks is how he thinks he should go about this because he's not going to be believed I don't think so I'm really looking forward to this next one I have one more random thing that I just remembered as I was talking during the scene when they're driving uh, from the mother's house and uh, Jesse is just like just whistling in the car and the guy's talking to him and when they take a turn for like a split second if you look in the back if you look like out the window of the car the mascot dude from the first episode is just walking in the mascot costume. It's just a, a dude in a lion costume. He was just walking in the street. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, why is he walking in the mascot costume? So that was like a part of the episode. That wasn't just me noticing something random. That was just a weird thing they put in there, which I thought was so funny. I was like, why is he walking in the middle of just random houses and stuff? He's just on the street. And he was just walking in the costume. I was like, why is he in the costume? I don't know if that was supposed to be like... I don't know if I've been missing him in the other episodes, but I feel like I have to look for that now. Because that was like, what in the world is going on with that? But that was just something, that was definitely, they did that on purpose for sure. But that was funny to me. I was like, why in the world is he in the mascot costume walking down the street? But I really enjoyed this episode. I'm definitely looking forward to what's going to happen with Jesse learning the truth. And Jesse may possibly being confronted by someone who understands that he has this manipulative manipulative power but i definitely want to know what you guys thought about this one so please comment below let me know your favorite parts your least favorite parts and i want to know what you guys think is going to happen with ken cannon he's like this big dude who has this big company and everything slaughtering the, the cows and all that stuff that could destroy the city if someone doesn't take over so i want to know where you guys think that's headed i would assume he's going to get busted but I, it's hard to tell. It's such a small town. They could keep it hidden if they want to. One of those weird things. So I'm not 100% sure how it might play out. But I would love to know where you guys think it's headed. And of course what you guys thought about this episode in general. I had to find my remote. So please comment below. Let me know. And thanks for watching.